Hey guys, how's it going? So I have something really interesting to share with you in this uh, workhorse video, something I came across last night. And uh, just before I say it, I just want to say this, this is pretty cool to see uh, Jack Spencer investing his channel do a interview with workhorse. I even comment down below saying that I would love to see him do an interview with the solo CEO or Electromass CEO. You know, I would love to do that. I see that. I would, uh, you know, I, I could try to attempt to do one myself too. Maybe next week or something. I will email them and see if they were willing to come on to my channel and interview and I can interview. But I, I don't know for sure if I will. I just, I would, I'm thinking about it. I, I don't know. Like, I'm not 100% committed to it yet. So. Let me know in the comments below. Let me let me hear your thoughts. If I should, I should not, or no, whatever. But uh, anyways, so I want to show you something really cool. So okay, this is a interview that happened mm, like last year, or a couple years ago, on August 13, twenty eighteen, when Workhorse stock was way lower than it is right now. I think Workhorse stock was trading at like. I think it was like the uh, two bucks or something, two three bucks. But as you can see in the background, this is the workhorse truck, which they so which when they uh, when the CEO of Workhorse, Steve Burns, he left Workhorse and started up Lordstown Motor, and he, in order to you know take the workhorse truck that they've been developing for years. Uh, he promises them a 10% stake into Lordstown Motor non-dilutive and on top of that some incentives too when they sell the car and then on top of this there's also this vehicle in the background where it looks like a, basically a drone car it's really cool I'm gonna play the video and then I'll talk more about it so yeah Charles, I've actually got two ways to pick you up here in New York. Today. This is the Workhorse W15 hybrid pickup and the Surefly hybrid personal helicopter that the company's also working on. We'll get to that in a minute. Steve Burns is the CEO of Workhorse. Okay. Uh, your company went public back in 2015, building commercial vans. Now you're getting into the commercial pickup truck business, the pickup truck business. Two and a half million pickups, full-size pickups sold in America last year. Yeah. Not one of them was a plug-in hybrid. Right. Why is this a good idea? I mean, if the big guys aren't doing it, why do you think this is a space you should be getting into? Yeah. Well, when you see a space that hasn't changed in a long time, it's ripe for innovation. And essentially, a pickup truck's been the same uh, for uh, almost 100 years. So we think, uh, given that passenger vehicles are, are becoming electric now, uh, people to do work, you know, have to work. Uh, we just thought we brought them a tool that would let them do the work more efficiently. Got 5,000 orders from them, a factory in Indiana where you're going to be building them starting next year? Yep, late this year, early next year. What's it going to cost and what can it do for a customer? $52,000 for an all-electric pickup truck or, or a hybrid version. You're going to be doing an all-electric version yeah. sometime. Yeah. Tesla is also going to be doing an all-electric version yeah. of a pickup. Yeah. At least they say they are. Yeah. Uh, you just finished your fourth equity offering here in yeah. New York. Yeah. Uh, Tesla's talking about getting out of the stock market going yeah. private. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, you you're, seem to be pretty comfortable bringing on new uh, shareholders. Uh, well, being public has its advantages and disadvantages, but the transparency of it we like, and uh, it enables people to, to invest and get out when they like, so I, I like it. It's uh, It comes with an added overhead, but uh, I like it. You're worried about taking on a big name like Tesla in the electric pickup space. They're not yeah. working on a hybrid right now. Yeah. So, you know, we think given the nature of what a pickup truck does, what people expect from a modern day pickup, one day it might have to be to towing 6,000 pounds. So we think most people will go for the hybrid. But if somebody doesn't tow much, they might like the all electric version. It's just a commercial vehicle or you think there's a retail market for it? Well, we're starting with commercial because that's our DNA, but uh, a lot of consumers have asked us about it. So we started taking orders for consumers and uh, after the first round of uh, of industrial ones, then we'll go with consumers. Pickup business, a tough nut to crack on its own, but you're also getting into aviation yeah. with a hybrid electric personal helicopter. Yeah. How do these two things yeah. go together? Yeah. Well, uh, there's a whole emerging market called EVTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. So personal mobility, whether you're, you're delivering people or cargo, uh, electric air mobility is, is on the 
on the come. So this is something somebody would buy just to have fun with on the weekend, but you also think there's commercial applications for yep. it. Yep. So it's a short range. You know, we think, why doesn't everybody have a helicopter in their, in their garage, right? And they're relatively expensive, difficult to learn to fly. Most people perceive them as not being safe. So something that's easy to fly, you fly this with just a joystick, right? It's, like, it's really literally like a big drone. So it's safe, it's easy to fly, it's relatively inexpensive. Why is it safer than a regular helicopter? Well, we try to have not a single point of failure. So if a bird strike should hit that prop, you know, the other seven can get you down, right? It has a ballistic parachute in the middle. The worst case, everything goes wrong, you've got a parachute to bring the whole craft down. So it's just inherently got less things that can, can take you down. And you're going to be doing this for $200,000. You've done some test flights so yes, far. Yes. Haven't had it up to altitude, but when you can, right. how fast can it go? How high can it go? What right. can this do performance-wise? It can go about 75 miles per, per hour, and uh, I also go about 75 miles in range. Now, this isn't the only thing you have that flies. You have also got commercial trucks with drones on top that can right. deliver packages. Right. You're working with UPS on that project? No, we're, we're working with a bunch of uh, folks, but nobody in particular that we, we can mention yet. But UPS has tested it for us, and uh, FAA is allowing us to make deliveries right now. So a drone jumping off the top of a truck to make a delivery, we think, makes a lot of sense. And that's been working out well for you? Yeah, yeah, that's really, you know, that's a case of, uh, it's about a buck a mile to run a diesel. It's about three cents a mile to run a drone. So it's one of those things that's going to happen. And the driver runs the drone, single operator, once you get into production? Yep. The driver hands it through the roof to the package to the drone, and it takes off and delivers by itself. All right, Steve Burns, CEO. So this, that CEO, Steve Burns, is now the CEO of Lordstown Motor, or rather it's uh, he's going to be merging going public through Diamond Peaks Holding, but this is not official, and until it's official, until there is confirmed news, I think Diamond Peak Holdings will be stuck in this range, but <laughs> I'm very bullish on Diamond Peaks Holdings because they are partnered up with GM, and they have a GM facility, and GM's going to help them out to create the workhorse truck, and... Yeah, the the that helicopter is pretty cool, but I mean, uh, you're probably going to need some kind of like license to drive it. But I still think that's pretty cool. And as electric batteries get better and better and better in the future, I think uh, this this something like this could be very very possible in the future. Uh, some kind of drone helicopter, especially if they can like partner up with Tesla for that. I think that would be very, very cool. But yeah, anyways, uh, workhorse stock right now is uh, well, just trading sideways. Don't know where it's going to go. Don't know what's going to do. But, um, you know, ultimately, I this is what I, something I still truly, truly believe that unless big money, like a lot of big money decides to pump workhorse stock because they see a vision, I think Workhorse is probably going to stay in this range. It doesn't matter how many interviews the CEO come out with, how much what what he talks about, as long as there's no, as long as there's um, unless big money is involved, the stock won't really take off. That's just my opinion. And then Solo uh, today just trading at two sixty five. Like what, uh, one thing I want to point out is they talk about this Workhorse truck. This thing has been in development and tested for years and years and years and now now Diamond Peak Holding or oh, Lordstown is finally putting up the manufacturing facility and finally got the you know the actual version they want to man high manufacture at a high at a high volume and um you know that took a long time that took like years and years of development R and D and development and finally, they're coming out with the uh, with a final truck version that they're going to high produce in high volume. Solo is the same story. Solo took years and years and years of development and testing and make sure that it's right for the consumer and setting up the manufacturing facility. And they are very very close to um, delivering that on that promise that they've been. They've been telling uh, consumers for a long time. A lot of people say solo cars are going to fail. You know, that's your opinion. My opinion is there is 
businesses out there that would want the solo car and there's consumers there's certain consumers out there that will want the solo car because everyone thinks differently not everyone is going to be like i want a big vehicle i want you know a big expensive suv no some people like small cars some people like bikes some people like scooters and as long as they can uh, solo can offer a, a, a good way for everyone to get a solo car like uh, financing is a good way for everyone to get a solo car because then people will be like okay i'll pay two hundred dollars a month i don't have to pay for gas so if i if i spend two hundred dollars a month on gas i would literally save uh, you know the car would be essentially free after five years you know, like $200 a month, everyone can afford that. Everyone can afford $200 a month. Everybody needs a vehicle to get around. So millennials can definitely afford a solo car for five years. And then after five years, they can decide to sell that solo car and get all their money back. You know, that's a possibility. So I think Electroma has a business. They will be able to sell their cars. And I think, you know, this is down here is an opportunity. I mean, I don't know if it can go down lower. I don't know what short sellers are going to do. Look, it's starting to run. Damn. Okay, well, uh, maybe I should buy some more car options before the market close because I'm thinking that Monday might have be might be the might might be the uh, production news and that might skyrocket the stock. I don't know. I hope so. I'm crossing my fingers. Anyways, um Automotive right now is down. Uh, Arrow is down. Uh, Spartan Energy is trading sideways. Uh, Shell is trade uh, is pop five percent today. Neo is uh, just kind of trading sideways. Tesla today is also kind of trading sideways. Sony today is uh, right in the afternoon anyways is you know, kind of trading sideways AMD also kind of trading sideways Intel is also trading sideways. Oh, no Intel is popping a little bit right now uh, Liberal health science sideways action up to cents. We'll see that uh, can continue true Eve True Eve is just popping like crazy right now. Holy moly you know what's going on? Wow, that's just crazy. Uh, high tide today is just trading sideways. Gold is also kind of trading sideways today. The market in general is starting to turn a little bit green, uh, but still a little red. Oil's red. Oil, uh, gold is red. Uh, yeah. So canadian nickel company this is uh well, just giving us some exposure i w i'm hoping i am a shareholder and i am underwater but I, I don't have a big position i want the stock to go to a dollar that's when i would start buying some stock very good food company today uh just trading sideways anyways this is it for my video thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed it subscribe for future updates and have a great day bye